So, uh, what is UNDP's interest in climate change? Well, if you are uh, an organization that uh, prides itself to work on human development issues, then you also have to take into account uh, climate change. Uh, especially in a country like Bangladesh, uh, almost every development aspect is kind of influenced by uh, climate change. Let me give you two examples, very concrete examples. Uh, we know, for example, that uh, in the uh, recent past the uh, disasters in Bangladesh have become fundamentally uh, more frequent uh, and also uh, stronger and destructive power, uh, which means that uh, any kind of uh, livelihood programs, any kind of poverty reduction, programs are deeply of course uh, influenced by uh, uh, you know climate change issues uh, you have uh, in fact uh, quite a migration already now in Bangladesh from uh, climate sensitive areas for example areas that are very close to the coast and suffer from increased salinity of, of, of the uh, uh, soil uh, towards uh, uh, urban areas so uh, you have an issue of uh, increased urban poverty that is among others triggered by climate change. And are there opportunities to, to both limit the impacts of climate change and also uh, achieve development? I think they are. Um, very often uh, it is portrayed almost as an either or. Uh, either you invest in equitable development uh, or you uh, invest in sustainable uh, development and climate change. That's not the case. We, we uh, know about many solutions which are uh, beneficial for both equitable development as well as for climate change adaptation and mitigation. Two examples, uh, one is for example uh, a big intervention in the brick manufacturing sector in Bangladesh. This is one of the biggest polluters. Um, we uh, approach this by uh, providing incentives for the private sector to move towards cleaner technologies. Uh, but at the same time we offered solutions that are much more efficient in terms of uh, uh, production of bricks than the old solutions. So what we are having now is uh, we are having a move from the traditional brick factoring uh, methodology into the new technology that is not only anymore incentivized by us but other brick makers basically follow, follow suit because they see the real benefit to moving towards a cleaner technology that also gets them more profit. Uh, the second uh, issue um, would be uh, really I think uh, um, our coastal afforestation project. Unfortunately, uh, in the last decades, uh, the whole coastal areas have been deforested because of population pressure and poverty issues. And this makes uh, the coastal areas extremely vulnerable against uh, storm surges, against uh, uh, you know, even small cyclones, uh, because uh, as you know, Bangladesh is uh, completely flat and these areas are literally 10 to 20 centimeters above uh, the sea level. So what we are now doing is we are funding uh, the afforestation of mangroves that build a natural um, uh, kind of uh, embankment against uh, uh, storm surges on the one hand, but we're doing this in a in a on a community-based manner. So it's not only mangroves that are, that are planted, but it's also, for example, fruit trees and other trees that are providing livelihoods. So you are on the one hand taking care of climate change adaptation, on the other hand you are providing livelihoods for poor people and thirdly you are contributing to climate change mitigation because of the afforestation of new forests. Of course carbon is trapped in these forests. That's what we call win-win situations um, and uh, we believe that a lot more uh, should be focused on these win-win uh, solutions uh, because if you only focusing on climate change without having the incentives right behind it, it's unlikely that it will uh, you know, uh, catch roots in the larger development scene, in the financing from the national government and so on. But uh, we have already very, very good successes that uh, you know, the government has, uh, is now replicating on a much, much bigger scale our pilot, uh, our win-win-win pilot on climate change mitigation, adaptation and livelihood generation. And we've heard that uh, a lot of the funding that's been committed for adaptation and mitigation projects in poor countries hasn't yet been spent. Why do you think that is and how can we, how can we speed up the action here? 
Well, I think it, uh, it, it has to do with a, a fundamental policy change. Uh, some of the policies are not, uh, not yet there. On the other hand, um, some issues are absorption capacity. But I have to say from a Bangladesh point of view, I would still uh, argue that there is not a backlog or a bottleneck in terms of spending the funds. On the contrary, everybody is uh, waiting for the big funds to come because this, the funding that is there at the moment uh, is doing, uh, you know, is, 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 is conducive and is, is, is contributing positively, but it's only a drop in the ocean in terms of what Bangladesh needs uh, to really adapt to climate change. Thank you very much for joining us.